resilience is very important for our, for our motorway um, in different domains actually because uh, um, we have to consider um, the Brandon Motorway as a physical structure, so an infrastructure, but also the function carried out by this infrastructure. So the, uh, we have to grant uh, uh, the mobility of uh, uh, users and goods. So when we talk about resilience, uh, we have to, um, uh, to consider both aspects. And um, talking about um, my company or my motorway, um, it is uh, considered to be um, a critical infrastructure because uh, it, uh, it is essential for the connection between Northern Europe and uh, Southern Europe because it, um, it runs along uh, one of the most important European corridors, uh, the Scandinavian Mediterranean corridors. So the interruption of the service provided by the motorway um, could cause criticalities in terms of uh, uh, economic, uh, economic impact or uh, impact on, on society, on on the environment. Uh, so that's why we consider um, resilience a lot and we consider it when planning, when maintaining, also when, um, um, when we have to deal with uh, emergencies. Because another aspect is also that we have a lot of bridges, viaducts, tunnels, we cross a, um, a very important natural um, area, the Alps. So an ecosystem which is very important, we have to, to manage um, our motorway according to principles of, of, of uh, sustainable mobility. Um, we have pressure from, uh, from, the, um, uh, from the public opinion to, to grant uh, uh, sustainability, to, um, to reduce uh, uh, the impact on the environment. So we have, uh, we have to consider all these aspects in, um, in, uh, when talking about resilience. And also, last things, and then I stop, is uh, that we our motorway is very long, 314 kilometers, so it crosses the Alps, it crosses the Po Plain, so we have different uh, natural uh, threats, let's say, so floods, uh, uh, snowfalls, earthquakes, uh, so um, landslides that are not, not all happening very frequently, but we have to take them into consideration. We use now our um, uh, sensors to monitor the dynamic behavior of, of uh, viaducts, in particular one which is the highest one. Um, we have sensors to monitor slopes so as to be alerted in case of uh, landscapes. All these, um, so we have sensors, they are interface um, to the traffic control center and uh, um, TCC operators get alarms and then they, they react to, to these alarms. Um, so physically we have these sensors, what we, um, uh, what we need also, what we use also is uh, uh, management, so not only sensors and devices, but uh, uh, management and uh, because so resilience is also the, cap the capacity of the organization to to, to uh, change uh, uh, the processes when, uh, when we have disturbances, um, uh, changing the normal operation of the world, and we have to, to get quick to recovery situations. Technology sh surely can help uh, improving, um, improving uh, facing um, emergencies, for instance, uh, but the stakeholders' involvement um, is surely one of the most important uh, aspects uh, to, to face. We can improve that. We, we are improving also in technology. We are trying to, to add, uh, I don't know, maybe one example is uh, uh, CITS systems or cooperative systems. Uh, uh, we are concentrating on cooperative systems for automated driving, which you can say, okay, this, this has nothing to do with uh, resilience, but uh, actually it can, it can be um, applied to maintenance, for instance, uh, so, and combine, find a synergy between new technologies uh, and what we now do. But uh, uh, at present, before these new technologies can be applied, because, because we are now in the research phase, and uh, involving stakeholders and having them uh, uh, work uh, uh, with us, uh, this is very, very, very important.